call the honourable member for Ryan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I believe it is safe to say that all of us in this place feel blessed to live in Australia. Indeed, be Australian citizens, for many of us since birth. We live in a great nation, a strong nation, and a nation I am proud to call my home. As the Prime Minister has often remarked, to be born in Australia is to win the lottery of life. And the coalition government's bill today will mean that those children not born in Australia now have the chance of becoming Australian, living in a safe and loving home and enjoying the rights and freedoms we all enjoy. Adoption is all about giving children a better life. There are too many children who have no parents or no effective parents, and they deserve a better life, and adoption is a way of providing this. For too long, adoption has been in the too hard basket. For too long, it has been too hard to adopt. And for too long, this has been a policy no-go zone. But, Madam Speaker, this must change. The Coalition is de determined to see this change, which is why I am proud to be standing in favour of this bill today. There are too many foster parents in our country who would like to adopt. There are many foster children in our country who would like to be adopted. There are millions of children in orphanages overseas who would love to have parents, and thousands of those could come to Australia, and we need to make it easier for that to happen. Madam Speaker, one of my constituents, Mr Sean Crooks, for a number of years represented the African adoption community on a Queensland Government Advisory Committee. In June 2012, he was told that there were seven Queensland couples with files in Ethiopia, three approved Queensland couples with files waiting to be sent to Ethiopia, and a further ten couples under assessment for the Ethiopian adoption program. Nationally, many more families were affected. Mr Crooks was also told that the most current document available from the Attorney-General's Department detailing their activity in program development was dated October 2010, two years earlier. In, Mr Crooks wrote to me in June 2012 as the father of an Ethiopian-Australian adopted child who had his dreams of extending his family and giving his son an Ethiopian-Australian sibling crushed. He was informed by Adoption Services Queensland that they had been told of the Attorney General's Department's decision, but that instruction included not informing the families until the following week, the last day of the parliamentary sitting, making it very difficult to rally any politician support, and by which time the representatives of the Attorney General's Department were already in Ethiopia, terminating contracts and agreements and undoing years and years of work and negotiations. He felt they had planned very carefully to make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to recover the program. Mr Crooks had started his proceedings eight years earlier, in 2004. Madam Speaker, I was shocked to hear of this policy shift and the injustice to parents and, more importantly, to the children who missed out on loving families. Since talking with many affected parents and local families, I have followed the progression of these new laws and was very pleased to hear of the announcement by the Prime Minister that Australia would be amending these adoption laws. This bill facilitates the grant of Australian citizenship to children adopted by Australian citizens through bilateral adoption arrangements between Australia and countries not party to the Hague Convention on Interlocutory Adoption. The purpose is to create an entitlement to citizenship for children adopted under bilateral arrangements equivalent to the entitlement currently provided for children adopted under Hague Convention arrangements. Inter-country adoption first became a recognised phenomenon in Australia following the airlift in 1975 of Vietnamese war orphans to Western nations, with 280 children coming to Australia from orphanages in Saigon and being adopted by Australian families. Since that time, many Australians have adopted children from overseas with numbers reaching a peak of 434 in 2004-05. More recent years have seen a decline in the numbers. In 2012-13, there are only 129 adoptions, with the characteristics of children available for adoption also having changed. Inter-country adoption is also a global phenomenon. Just as in Australia, inter-country adoption rates are declining worldwide. 
The Hague Convention was negotiated because of the lack of uniform standards in relation to inter-country adoption. The Convention entered into force on 1 May 1995 and was ratified by Australia in 1998. As of January 2014, there were 93 contracting states to this convention. The objects of the Hague Convention are to establish safeguards that will ensure that inter-country adoptions take place in the best interest of the child and with respect to his or her fundamental rights. Also, they establish a cooperative system among contracting states so that safeguards are respected and the abduction, sale of and trafficking in children is prevented. And they ensure that contracting states recognise adoptions made in accordance with the Convention. Australia has inter-country adoption programs with 12 Hague Convention countries, the most recent addition being South Africa, and has bilateral arrangements with two non-Hague Convention countries, Taiwan and South Korea. Taiwan is now Australia's largest program. Australia requires that all programs are ethical and meet the standards and principles set by the Convention. Some programs have been suspended or cancelled because of concerns about failure to meet the Convention standards. Following the 2013 election, the Coalition Government moved quickly to investigate possible improvement of Australia's inter-country adoption program, with the Prime Minister announcing on 19 December 2013 that he would establish an interdepartmental committee on inter-country adoption to report to him in March 2014 with options for implementing reform within Australia over the next 12 months. The committee's report identified a range of impediments to the inter-country adoption, including the lack of nationally consistent state and territory regulation, prohibitive fees and waiting times and the standard of post-adoption support services. Among the committee's more significant recommendations was a proposal for a new national inter-country adoption service to apply to all Australians wanting to adopt a child from overseas. This proposal was put to the May COAG meeting where it was then agreed upon that there would be a national system of inter-country adoption by early 2015. The COAG communique states, and I quote, under the new service, the Commonwealth will fund either a new accredited non-government organisation or organisations or a Commonwealth agency to provide services for inter-country adoption by early 2015. The Commonwealth and states and territories will work closely together to make sure there is a smooth transition to the new system. Madam Speaker, I would like to commend the advocacy of Deborah Lee Furness in support of these reforms, and I understand that she has been in discussion with the Prime Minister about their shared passion for reforming Australians' adoption laws. I am delighted to see these laws finally coming to fruition, and I commend this bill to the House.